Welcome to Cloud Security Basics, a series where we explain the ins and outs of securing your application on Google Cloud. Sound fun? Then stick around, because in this episode, you'll learn about Google Cloud service accounts and why you might want to be using them. Hello, Cloud Detective. Last time, you foiled my plan to compromise your company's security, but you used IAM to keep your members' identity secure and keep me from accessing the data I wanted. Your employees are secure enough, but what about your scripts and applications? If the applications that can automatically access your resources can be compromised, then so can a lot of your company's information. Okay, so here's what we know. Many times it's useful to have an application or script that can access resources, like data storage buckets or other cloud resources, on your behalf without needing a person to manually sign off on the access. One way of doing this is by storing a user's credentials and letting the automation script or application use those. But there are a lot of pitfalls involved when working with user credentials. For example, if I'm using my user credentials to access the resources in my automation script, then any time I share access to the script, I'll have to share my credentials with someone else. And this opens up the possibility of someone using my credentials for something I didn't intend. And since I'd also have to store my credentials somewhere for my script to be able to use them, this adds another security risk. What if the wrong person gets access to those secrets? So ideally, I'd like an automated way to share access to my Google Cloud resources without having to store or share my user account credentials. Luckily, Google Cloud provides a lot of tools and services to protect users from this exact problem. And in this case, Google service accounts could avoid many of these issues. For example, instead of just giving out my user credentials to run workloads on VMs, it would be better to create a service account for the application and grant it access to call Google APIs so that users don't even need to be involved. Then I could grant groups of people access to that service account, and this access can be easily revoked if necessary and doesn't involve sharing user credentials to access a resource. But how should I set them up? Let's think about this. What else do I know about using service accounts? A service account is a robot identity, but don't tell them that. And this service account identity is assigned to permissions and roles in order to access resources and set credentials, the same way you'd grant access to humans. So because service accounts provide the same access as user accounts, it would be wise to significantly limit scope and review who has account permissions and access to your accounts on a regular basis. Service accounts don't use passwords in the same way a user account might. So if you're within Google Cloud, then you can just attach service accounts to instances and other resources within Google Cloud, and it'll securely take care of authenticating the identity of the service account. But if you're using service accounts in another cloud platform or on-prem, you can use public and private keys to authenticate those service accounts. And if you're using a service key, it's important to not download them because then you've gone from an identity problem, which is what service accounts are intended to solve, to a secrets management problem, like who has access to that key file and how will that access be controlled? This is why some organizations set a policy disabling account key creation entirely. And if you give an individual your service account key code, it's really not so different from giving someone your username and password to your account. It grants them access to whatever you have access to. So if we decide to use keys, I want to, well, one, make a policy that we store them somewhere secure and that we don't do something like commit the service account credentials to the repository with the source code, which would defeat a lot of the benefits of service accounts. 
to look at key rotation, a security best practice is to rotate service account keys regularly. And this just involves creating a new key, switching apps to the new key, and then deleting the old key. But it helps a lot with securing our credentials as long as they're stored and accessed securely. Still, that doesn't prevent the very human errors like assigning the wrong service accounts to the wrong users or applications, which would grant unnecessary permissions. So to minimize the chance of that happening as much as possible, just like with IAM, it would be wise to use a naming convention for your service accounts. It should be easy to look at a service account and know its purpose. A naming pattern like that could be effective here as long as the service account name fits into the 30 character limit. So if a cloud team requires BigQuery and cloud storage access, to automate data uploads, we would provision a service account named that. And finally, I want to implement a policy of tracking and logging unused service accounts. So hopefully we have some logging and monitoring set up because a single application can have hundreds of service accounts if needed. And as these continue to pile up, admins may start to lose track of them all. Maybe it would be wise to create a policy to disable service accounts that haven't been used in a while, or at the least have someone manually take a look at them to see if they're still valid. That's it. I think I have enough info to set this up. Egad, detective. I see you solved yet another cloud security riddle of mine. I was hoping to prey on the automated access points into your cloud infrastructure by searching for stored tokens, passwords, and credentials in source repos, but I didn't find any. It seems like you're using cloud. It seems like you're using Google Cloud service accounts to keep your application secure and scalable. Service accounts can thwart people like me, allow access to the right identities when necessary, and allow applications to access GCP resources without human intervention. They make it possible to efficiently and quickly set up permissions, scopes, and roles for your organization to keep people like me out. I hate to admit this, but you should use service accounts if you need to authenticate applications or scripts to use additional Google Cloud services. You can use them to give out permissions across numerous resources without having to expose user data and possibly negatively impact your app's security. But you can't stop every violation from occurring. Be ready because next we'll find out what will you do when something sneaks past your defenses. Hopefully you're monitoring and logging what's happening in your application, or else you have no idea what to do when something goes wrong. So there you have it, another episode of Cloud Security Basics. Next episode, we'll focus on using logging and auditing to track down suspicious activities. So stay tuned for the rest of the Cloud Security Basics series, because when it comes to security, you can't let bad actors win. Yeah.